Meditations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Moth from a Zoologist and have a little tiny bit of a story time for you guys. So if you would like to know what I think of this fragrance and uh, my little story how to tell, then keep Always watching. guys, I will let you know if a fragrance was sent to me to review, if it was just sent to me as a gift from a brand, if I purchased it, things like that. This was purchased. I bought this. If you guys don't know, normally when Zoologist has a release, I pester Victor, like, saying, can I buy it early so I can review it? And he usually is very nice and it's like, oh, fine. <laughs> it's very, very nice, but I bought it. I paid, paid for it. <laughs> I bought it. So this was bought with the intent for me to review it with my money. It was not sent to me to review. So that being said, let's get into Moth. This is the newest release from Zoologist. It will be released in May. It is a very dark, smoky scent, and I'm gonna get into it a little bit with you guys because there's some things I really want to address with this fragrance, and I'm really excited to address these things. So let's start with the, with the notes. I'm gonna read them from here. The nose behind this fragrance is Tomo uh, Inaba, and if I mispronounce their name, please forgive me. I'm very sorry. I'm not very good with Japanese anymore. Very sorry. But the notes, the top notes are black pepper, cinnamon, clove, cumin, lemon, nutmeg, and saffron. The top notes are what sold me on this originally when he um, announced this fragrance. At the heart, you have heliotrope, iris, jasmine, mimosa, rose, and you get. No, I probably mispronounced that. Please forgive me. And at the base, we have ambergris, honey, resins, gayak wood, musk, nagar matha. I know I mispronounced that. I'm very sorry. Um, oud, patchouli, smoke, and vetiver. Now, I've worn this for about a week. It's been a variety of different, um, very humid, very hot, very cool, very windy, very dry. Um, before I go into how this fragrance smells, I'm just gonna let you guys know about the longevity. I have fantastic longevity on my skin, six to eight hours on really humid days, about eight to 10 hours on more of the cooler, drier days, as you guys know I live in the tropics. Um, projection of this is about arm's length for the first half of the fragrance, and then it comes a little bit closer and becomes a little bit more intimate at the end of the fragrance. So I would say it has medium to moderate projection. Um, it's a beautiful scent. It does tell a story on your skin, and that's what I'm going to get into. So, I know that this is probably Victor's or one of Victor's most beloved fragrances. This is one that's very close to his heart. There's a little bit of flavor text that goes with um, his fragrance, the story that this fragrance tells. I'm going to write it. I'm going to link it below, um, kind of put the description in the description box if you want to read about it. But I, I just kind of wanted to get into the life of this fragrance and kind of describe it a little bit. First things first, this fragrance is not going to be for everybody. This is a very complex fragrance and there's a definite kind of animalic musk to this that is there the entire time. Paired with the oud, some people will really gravitate towards that and some people will just completely not be for it. And it's because of that like animalic, musky, resinous, like oud scent that really, really resonates with me and makes this really beautiful. But not everybody is into that and there's nothing wrong with not being into that. So I would definitely sample this first. This is probably a very wearable scent, but not for everybody. Some of Victor's scents are definitely on the more conceptual side and some people really like it and some people are a little bit, uh, they, they can't understand it or they just don't like the way that the fragrance is. And if you don't like very kind of skanky, strong oud scents with musks, you're not gonna like the animalic notes in this fragrance. But for me, that is what wins the scent over so much. The opening of this is very aromatic. You get a lot of the saffron, you get a lot of cinnamon, a little tiny bit of brightness from the lemon, but those spices are really there and they're very powerful. You get the honey right away and you got the smoke right away. And actually, if there was one word to describe this fragrance, I would say smoked. Not smoke, smoked. It's a very smoked fragrance. It's definitely a little bit sweet and bewitching. It's heavy, it's thick, but there's a clearness to it. And I've kind of described this before. If you guys have ever had like honey or if you've ever had like maple syrup that's really dark and you like hold it up and you can look through the container and you can see through it, but still really dark and thick and rich, 
that's the feeling that this fragrance has as a smell. It's very dark, it's very thick, it's very rich, but there's a clarity to this fragrance, which is really, really beautiful. It opens up again, very spiced, very sweet, very smoky. And then you've got those beautiful, and I mean beautiful uh, florals that come into play. Specifically the heliotrope, the iris, and the jasmine are just absolutely beautiful. And they pair really nicely with the base notes and really beautifully with the opening. I would say that the most beautiful part of this fragrance is about an hour and a half in because that's when everything comes to the party. You've got the Gaiac, you've got the Oud, the Vetiver is more of a vegetal damp Vetiver rather than like a grassy dry Vetiver uh, mixed with again the beautiful florals and the beautiful aromatic spices in the opening. It's really such a treat. It's a very dark and rich scent, but again, that clarity, specifically I would say it's from the saffron and the lemon, gives it a little bit of spice and brightness, which really works nicely, works beautifully, but that smoke is just there the entire time, and it is so fantastic, and I love it. I think the smoke plays off of the woods, plays off of the honey, plays off of the spices, but kind of contrasts a little bit with the florals, which I think makes this a very complex fragrance. There's definitely a story going on and it is mostly in balance, but the little bit that is out of balance is actually done expertly to wear this makes and makes it a very exciting fragrance to wear because in the opening you're like, oh, this is just a very rich, sweet fragrance. And then you got the florals and they're really fantastic and they're powdery and they're beautiful. And then you get like the resins and the patchouli with the smoke and then everything's a little bit combative, but it still works. And then everything kind of again blends beautifully into that gorgeous base. And the musk in there with the oud again, which comes off a little bit animalic, is I think aside from the opening of the saffron and the lemon, which gives it that clarity. And that clarity is so important to this fragrance. With that clarity in there, with that musk and that oud, you're giving it a richness and a little bit of a muskiness at the base, which kind of helps all the other notes stand out on their own. And they play together with those notes beautifully. The jasmine and the musk is really nice. It kind of gives us an old world feel with the iris. And then you've got the beautiful, and I mean beautiful, oud and honey and resins and smoke and vetiver with that gorgeous opening. It's just this fragrance dances on your skin in a completely different way than a sheer light ethereal fragrance because this is more of a dark intoxicating bewitching scent. Now again if you're not into musky ouds, if you're not into skanky oud scents, I wouldn't say this is skanky but because of the musk it comes off a little bit animalic and some people don't like those types of scents and that's completely fine which is why if you kind of stay away from those kinds of scents because of a lot of things that are going on in here and because that musk and that oud is what I think really shines in this fragrance you might not it might not be for you and so definitely sample first and there's nothing wrong if those fragrance if those notes you don't like again for the longest time I didn't like musk in fragrances and it was only within the past year and a half that I really started to gravitate towards musky scents and love them and appreciate them but not everybody likes really strong animalic scents. And I do think that this is probably one of zoologists' more animalic scents when it comes down to the composition of the scent. But the smoke in here is beautiful. And I think that with moth and smoke and just the complexity going on, I think it is really super duper beautiful and very successful. I can see why this would probably be one of Victor's favorite scents. The scent definitely tells a story on your skin. You can definitely understand that there was a vision for this scent from the very beginning. And that's kind of the story time I wanted to get into with you guys, is my um, appreciation for moths. And when I think of this scent, this reminded me of a short story when I was younger that actually um, it um, inspired this tattoo. And I thought that since you guys ask about this tattoo and we're talking about moth, this would be a great time to kind of explain one of the elements of my sleeve. So uh, this is ending the review of this real quick. Fantastic fragrance, not for anyone. Absolutely beautiful. Probably uh, one of zoologists' most compelling scents that they've come out with. It's a beautiful, like right on the line between conceptual, avant-garde, and artistic, and a wearable beauty that I just think a lot of people are really going to love. 
So that's my review of Moth. Stunning scent. Gorgeous scent. Now let's talk about my tattoo. And I'm going to show you real quick as best as I can. This is really bad. I'm not really good at showing off. Anyway, the most important part is like right here. It's a book and there's candles and there's moths on my arm. And growing up, you guys know, I didn't have the best school years. I was bullied pretty uh, viciously. And um, I found solace in reading and I found solace in stories and imagination and fairy tales and things like that. And when I was in the third grade, we read a short story and it stuck with me to this day. And I don't remember the name of the short story. I don't remember the author. If I do, I will link it below. I'm just gonna summarize for you. So please forgive me. It's been like 25 years, if not longer. So I'm definitely gonna be butchering this. I'm gonna basically dealt with an ant that was by a candelabra. And there was a whole bunch of moths around it. And the moths kept flying into the flame and dying. And they kept doing it. And one after other, they saw what happened to their friends and they kept doing it. And the ant was so perplexed. What are you doing, you crazy moths? And the last moth was there and it was getting ready to fly right into the flame. And the ant screamed, stop. And the moth was like, hello friend, what can I help you with, you know? And the ant was like, I just wanna know why. Why are you guys flying into the flame and dying? And the moth's like, it's so beautiful. Look at how pretty it is, it's gorgeous. This is beautiful, this is beauty at its finest. It's bewitching, it's gorgeous, it's just absolutely special, and I just can't stop myself. I have to be a part of this. It's just so gorgeous. And the ant was like, well, can't you fly around it? Like, can't you look at it from afar and appreciate it at a safe distance so that way you don't die? And the moth is like, you know, kind of looked at the, the ant, and, like perplexed, and was like, well, no, I have to. And the ant's like, why? And the moth's like, I'd rather be part of something so beautiful, so gorgeous, so magnificent for an instant than to flutter around it and never truly be a part of it. And that just stuck with me. And, oh, you know, I'm not saying to go off yourself. I'm not condoning that whatsoever. But it was kind of like the, the risks that you take and how you don't play yourself safe, you don't play it safe, you take risks, you be a part of things without regret. And I'm not saying live wild, live free, you know, definitely you have to be safe and you know, I'm not condoning any type of fast living mentality, but it has so long to do with taking risks, calculated risks sometimes, sometimes uncalculated risks, to create something even if it's not going to be wildly appreciated by everybody. And for me growing up, it very much had to do with being who I was and without trying to fit into a mold, no matter the consequences, no matter the bullying, no matter the ostracization, I can't say words, you guys know that. And part of that had to do with me starting my channel. It was, you know, the internet's a scary place. There's so many people who have already done this. Is there a voice for me? Is there a place for me in this community? And I was like, I need to be a part of this. I want to be a part of this. And part of that story was what really inspired me to start my channel and gave me the push to start my channel and I think that when it comes down to moth this fragrance isn't going to be for everyone definitely that anomalic musky note in there could have been removed and this would have been a very safe wearable scent that probably would have had more mass appeal but I think what makes this fragrance so special specifically for me is that risk, is that added little twinge of animalicness that not everyone likes that makes this so special, that gives this clarity. And I really resonate with that because it's those risks that Victor takes that I think makes his entire line so successful. They're not for everybody, you know, definitely, and there's nothing wrong with that. But those risks are what really, what really make me gravitate towards zoologist sense and really ridiculously love zoologist sense. And moth, I think, is the perfect, like, culmina culmination. I know that's not the right word, I'm sorry. But the perfect, like, example of what I'm talking about in regards to taking risks and doing things artistically and at the same time it being a wearable just beauty. And so that is why I am so freakishly happy to wear this and excited to wear this. I put this on my skin and I was like, that's it. That's exactly what I was hoping it would be and more. The risk that this took with certain notes, 
unfamiliar compositions, things that not everybody gravitates towards, I think is what makes this so ridiculously successful. So my review of Moth, again, is highly, and I mean highly, highly positive. I purchased this full price, guys. Bought it myself. I reached out to Victor to buy it early. I pestered him forever. You know, he's very, very nice. But this is not a sponsored review. This is a review of a fragrance that I just absolutely love. But it's not for everybody. So I would recommend getting a sample. Samples are available on Zoologist or getting a travel size and trying this first. But if you like those dark, resinous, bewitching, mysterious scents, this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful and definitely worth checking out. So that is my review on Moth from Zoologist. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you like these types of videos, give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue doing videos like this. And also don't forget to subscribe because it's free and I'm free. And I put out new videos Monday through Friday. Sometimes I've been kind of bad with that, I'm sorry. And sometimes on the weekends as well. So I'll usually always have something for you to watch. As always, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time. Bye.